Jesus. We celebrate your victory, Jesus. We revel in your love, Jesus. We rejoice you set us free, Jesus. Your death has brought us life. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service this fourth day of um, April 2021. I thank God because uh, of giving us great drive, great uh, joy to convince uh, this praise and also for our friends and uh, 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 colleagues who are viewing us and following us through other various platforms. It's a great Sunday that we are commemorating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As uh, we remember very well, we have been having um, a continuous uh, afternoon fellowship throughout the whole week. And we have been following and uh, learning much about the life of Jesus Christ. And this day, as we look forward to, uh, to view and check on his resurrection. I will request uh, all of us to join us as we make this prayer as we start and as we follow to our topic today about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our Father, our guide, our leader, the author and perfect of our salvation, this particular hour alone approach the throne of mercy. Thanking you, God, my Father, Lord, for taking us through this time, God, my Father. In our unfaithfulness, you have remained faithful, Lord. In our laziness, you have been laziness, oh God, my Father. Well, my Father, when we have been down, Lord, you have blessed us up. You have given, given us strength, oh Lord, my Father. When the enemies have surrounded us, oh Lord, my Father, you have come and led me, uh, to our rescue, Lord. And these are our God, my Father, Lord. I'm before the servant of God, my Father, alone to speak the one. As I speak the one, my Father, to my people. I'm a message alone. I'm your vessel, God. I'll give my Lord what you have sent to me, me with, O oh God. As a servant, Peter sent, Gold and silver they need not, but whatever they hand, O oh God, my Father, that will they give to the cripple gone. This our Lord, Jehovah Shammah, I pray that, O oh God, what have given to me, I share it to thy people. Lord, take me through God. May you connect it to my Father. Let this sin, Paul, my Father, Lord, find a place in the heart of God. The praise that is fertile as it will grow. In Jesus' name, O oh God, my Father, walk with us through as a minister. In Jesus' name. This day we thank God. Uh, I'm Gideon. Most so, Christ is my Savior. He has guided me. He has taken care of me. I'm not disappointed at any time. To thank Him, I'll, I'm not disappointed. To serve Him, to stand with Him, to speak of His word without fear, day and night, saying that He is the author and perfect of my salvation. And this day, the fourth day, of uh, April 2021, I would like us to go through a very familiar topic about the resurrection. Please, we're talking about the resurrection is about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Definitely, whenever there is a res uh, resurrection, you must understand first of all what comes first is death. So Jesus died as we looked on, on Friday. We were checking on about the power of the cross and he died, was crucified. We, commem we are commemorating that on Good Friday. And today we are checking on his resurrection. What's after his death, that is Jesus Christ on the cross. He lay in the grave for three days and thereafter he resurrected. 
We can remember very well, we were speaking to his disciples saying that he was about to destroy the city and built it in three days. And this, he was speaking about his death. That when Jesus died, at the third day, he resurrected. And most thing what we would like to ask ourselves, what was the purpose of Jesus' resurrection? Or what is to the Christian fellowship, to the Christian family, what is the importance of it? And what we, 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 we learn about the resurrection is that as long as when Jesus was raised from uh, was raised up, God lest you have together with Christ. And um, checking on the book from the book of um, uh, that is Ephesians chapter two, verse one to six, and also Colossians uh, three, verse one to three, we get these words. As for you, you are damned in your transgression and sin, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the hell. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were damned in transgression. It is by grace that you have been saved and for and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms. We shall remember that very well in the book of Luke 24, verse 1 to verse 8. This is where our message is entirely anchored. Uh, I'll read. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices, the young prepared, and went to the tomb. They found the stone lord away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, sundry two men in crowds that grinned like returning stone beside them, in their fright, the women burned down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has been he, he has risen. Remember how he turned you while he was still with you in Galilee. Verse 7, and this was the words of Jesus that he has spoken. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the done day be raised again. Then they remembered these ones. Last verse states, after these men quoted these ones of Jesus, these women is when they remember what he is saying. This is something that happens in most of our lives. These, uh, they were looking for Jesus in the place of the dead. But these men took the initiative to inform them. He is not among us the dead. He has resurrected. In this era that we are living in, we might ask to uh, seek or adjust to ask ourselves what was the importance of Jesus' resurrection. Yes, as these men were uh, replying to these readings, he was, he is risen, he is not among the dead, he has risen. And today I would like us to uh, grab this statement that Jesus has risen, he is no longer in the tomb. The question is, do you understand the importance of Jesus Christ within the Christian family, within the Christianity community? Do you understand the power and the importance of Christ's resurrection? For one thing, the resurrection of Jesus Christ portraying the death and no power of the body of Christ. And from the story that we have been following throughout the, 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 the Holy Week, remember, like, um, we have been having fellowships, and these ones that are being spoken, these verse, they are depicting the life of Christ. He was betrayed, he was 
rejected. He was denied and um, at rest, he was crucified. That's what we are talking about, the power of crucifixion on Friday. And in this context, where Jesus really gave his life for him to be crucified on the cross, to pay the costs of the sins that we have committed, so that we can be redeemed back, so that we can be restored back to the kingdom of God, to, so that we can be able to attain the full authority that we had lost at the Garden of Eden, he paid the costs. When sin came in, our self-consciousness died. We could not be able, we, we, we went, we learned away from the position. We learned away from the family position. We learned away from position that we have been positioned to undertake by God, who is our creator. But when Jesus is coming, he wants us to restore back to our position. He is dejecting all those things and down to him. But he need not. Stop at that. Even when they decided to kill him, to hang him on the cross. Yes, he died. But on the dawn day, he resurrected. And these are the, um, the purpose of the importance of the resurrection, which was uh, is depicted in, our, in this verse. Verse uh, first importance, this resurrection of Jesus Christ gave us a new life. If you would, uh, in the book of uh, Second Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, it says, God has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Then grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior. Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to the right, to the right through the gospel. This is, we got a new life. The man who has Christ in him is a new creation. The whole and gone. He, has, he acquires a new creation, a new life, a new lease of life. And um, we take uh, the second importance of this resurrection. It was, it gave us a new birth. The new life, first was a new life, then there is a new birth. In First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are a new creature, a new birth that you have received through the brand, uh, through the brand of Jesus Christ. And this has been proved. It doesn't matter whatever you might have been going through. It doesn't matter the difficulties and the challenges that you might have been going through. Yes, you can pass through that fire. You can pass through that disappointment. But the moment you'll be coming out, you'll be coming out to the new creature with a new life, with a new birth. Because you are ever doing the suffering, you'll be doing the, uh, the, the rejection, and you'll be victorious at the other side. Yes, it marked at the new beginning. That's the that point. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gave you a new beginning. Therefore, that is according to Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the old has gone, and the new has come. We just start afresh. We are starting anew with experience. Yes, whatever we have passed through, what the difficulties that we have gone through, that was an experience. But now, we are starting a new beginning, a beginning of victory, whereby the start that our start is marked by a mark of victory. Fourth, the resurrection of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, gave you victory over Satan. First John chapter 4, verse 4, then chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. These are the ones. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome the world because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. That is, for every, everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that was overcame the world. Even our faith, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who is believes in Jesus is the Son of God. 
the resurrection of Jesus gives us victory over Satan. So we believe we are not losers. We are not defeated. Our brother, the first brother of our family, with Jesus Christ, overcame death even despite of the humiliation, rejection, and being crucified. He overcame all those difficulties, and now we can sing, we can dance and say, we are victorious because Jesus Christ is our strength. And that's why Paul is saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My brother and my sister, this is the day that you can proclaim and sing and raise your voice on the rooftops and say, I can sing, I can dance, I can do it because Jesus Christ who was my mentor, who is my brother, has done it. He has overcome it. So my brother, my sister, don't be calmed down. Don't be frustrated by anything. Don't be humiliated by anything. Just believe Jesus Christ is still overcame it and we can and we will overcome every temptation every rejection and every difficulty and by having overcome the Satan or being having victory over Satan he also attained the authority over Satan according to the book of Peter first chapter 3 verse 21 and 22 Jesus Christ has gone into heaven and is at the God's right hand with angels, authorities, and power in submission to him. We have authority over every, over certain. And this is what it entails. Entail. Remember, Jesus was sending his disciples at one point and was going, telling them, go out, cast out demons. You have the authority. Do not. Do not in any time doubt your authority. Just take a position. When you're at the right position, nothing should shake you in any way. Just move on. Execute your duties. Execute your responsibilities without fear. Because he who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The content inside is greater than whatever you're seeing before you. The fire inside you is greater than the fire outside there. The love, the love inside you is greater than the rejection outside there. Another thing, the resurrection of Jesus came and made you a son and I in the kingdom of God. For you did not receive the spirit that makes you as rave, Again to fear, but you receive the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba Father. The Spirit Himself testifies in our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co heirs with Christ. This was God's main purpose, bringing us back to the family. <clears throat> When the man strained off and got out of the, uh, uh, the position, it's when God started this project of bringing him back home. And now we can celebrate and say, yes, we are being reconciled with God and we are in the family. You remember the story of the lost, uh, the, 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 the lost son? He went and squatted all the, 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 the wealth that he had taken. But at one point, he came back to his senses. And whatever happened the death of Jesus Christ, it brought back the sense in our minds, the sense in our consciousness that we should go back home and we repent in our sins. And we have joined the family once again. We joined the family. Glory and honor be to the Lord who has given us the chance to be in the family, that we can be the co heirs we can be part and parcel of this family, and when the inheritance of the everlasting life won't be shared, we shall be part and parcel of this great ceremony, won't be celebrating, singing hallelujah, hallelujah, day and night, celebrating the great power, the great victory that we attain. The resurrection of Jesus Christ 
meets every need of life, it is your deliverance from the past. The resurrection of Jesus Christ delivered us from the past. It doesn't matter where we, are, we found ourselves in. Your own sinful life was put to death on the cross with Jesus and buried with him in the grave. Then when Jesus was raised to life again, you were raised with him as a new creation, leaving behind your own life in Jesus. In the same way, count yourself then to sin, but I live to God in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. It is your power for the present too. We died in sin and resurrection. We buried this the past, and now we are near creation. And this was just depicting uh, the picture that we should be having. Every day, every night, as we, uh, we, we, we retire to bed and we lay ourselves, we must walk alone, sleep, speak as victorious. They should not be intimidated by the few things that happen around us that make us to forget that this battle was won. It's not that we are fighting this battle today, but it was won. Or whatsoever what happening today is just a few distractions. We are distracted to, from uh, assessing and understanding the power and the victory that we have attained in ourselves. So just my brother, my sister, as you do your businesses, as you do and go around with your life, just know one thing, you are victorious. It's not that you are planning to win, you won this race. You won the victory. It was won on the cross. Yes, when they thought that they, are, they are not yet won, they went ahead and buried Jesus Christ. But I can tell you today, that was not the end. Jesus Christ resurrected. And that one given, has given us victory, victory about everything. It has given us the power for the present. Because Jesus is alive, we have now received the power of a spirit to live a life of victory over sin and all Satan's attacks against us. What shall we, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his son, but gave him up for us all, how will we not also along with him graciously give us all these things? Who will bring any change against those whom God has chosen? Shall God, who justifies, who is that condemns? Will Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, who is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall troubles or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or anger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Jesus loves us. Whatever you are, whatever you, 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 whatever you might be feeling, it doesn't matter the circumstances that you're being going through. Just know Jesus Christ loves you and you are more than a conqueror. Let no troubles distract you. Let no rejection frustrate you. Let no nothing, no passion, no, not that even the government should frustrate you because God has loved us with unconditional love that he gave his only begotten son that when we believe in him we are more than conquerors praise the Lord we are not losing we have won this battle it was won there on the cross Jesus was crucified and he spoke and said it is finished the years of rejection the years of losses the years of frustration, stress, depression, he said, it is finished because deep in him, in you, his content is greater than whatever was overing and portraying in the minds of the planners of his death. They thought they have won, but greater was the power that was carrying because at the hour of uh, day, even the cuttings, and the Holy of Holies spreads the tomb. It exposed everything. The victory that came could not be able 
The things of this world could not stand the power, could not stand the victory. There is Jesus that we are serving. When man brought Jesus Christ, where was this world? He healed the sick. He kicked out and cast out demons. Still, this is Christ we serve. Even the waves could not, the waves in the sea could not stand him. This Christ, he took his blood power there on the cross, died on the cross, buried and resurrected. I can tell you, nothing that is undifficult for God in your life. Everything in your life, it doesn't matter when you're feeling your relationship and your friendships and uh, your businesses, your life, your family is dead. Today I can tell you and I can proclaim the power of resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the book of Romans, as Paul was writing to the church of Romans, he was saying these words, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us. It dwells in you. Just confess Christ and believe in him. My brother, my sister, we are more than conquerors. We are not truces. We have won. We won many years ago. There are the Calvary where Jesus was crucified and buried and resurrected. That's we are quen that victory. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is your hope for the future. The resurrection of Jesus Christ gave us great hope for the future. He has come the firstborn of, from the dead. In his resurrection, he is opening the way for those who can believe in him, to follow him after him, to also list from the dead. One wonderful day in the future, Jesus Christ will return to the earth, not as a baby this time, but revealing to the whole world who Lily he is. The glorious God and the ruler of all creation. At that time, all those who have died, believing in him, will be raised to life again. And these were the ones that Paul was writing to the church of Corinthians. In, verse, in chapter 15 and verse 17, 23. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those, who, those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for the Israel, we have hope in Christ. We are to be pitted more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all time, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own time, Christ the first fruit, then when he comes, those who are, he comes, those who belong to him. Jesus is raised. He has given us victory over everything. We are in the family. We have the victory. Pick up your shield. It doesn't matter how you feel, how you feel deep in you. Pick yourself up and rise up and say, Jesus is raised. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. You can and you will and you have overcome every frustration and rejection. Rejoice in the Lord, brother and sister. Don't be intimidated by anything. It is the life may be difficult. The situation might seem difficult. And but always remember, there is a way. And Jesus has showed us there is a way. For they those who trust upon God, they are like Mount Zion. They cannot be shaken. Be up in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. In everything and for everything, as Paul could state in it, in everything and for everything, thank God. Without complaining, you will bring your thanksgiving and supplication to the Lord because he is the author and perfecter of everything. As I conclude, I can promise you, he who started the good work in you is faithful, faithful to reach it completion. And having restored you back to the kingdom, yes, he gave you everything that you need. He is not at the point of the disappointing you. Be of great courage and believe in God. He is the master and the king 
of everything. And let us pray. Almighty God, I bless you this morning. Thank you for the one that you have spoken to us. That Jesus Christ is dying and he is resurrecting and give us victory. Pray for every person. Those of you in my God watching us and those of following us, O oh Lord. For the Lord as this one goes to them, O oh my Father, Lord. Let you resurrect every part of their life that has died, O oh God, my Father. Their families, their businesses, O oh God. The opportunities, O oh Lord, my Father, Lord, King of glory. Everything they feel dead in their lives, O oh God. I speak life, my Father, this morning. My Father, Lord, be resurrected. Give them future and hope, O oh God, my Father, Lord, my Jehovah. The ones that Jesus spoke on the cross and saying that it's finished. The years of pain, the years of sickness, the years of frustration are finished this day, O oh God. My Father, Lord, I thank you because of all you are faithful and you are healing the cry of your children. And my Father, you are restoring back. You are restoring them back, my Father, Lord, to their position. I thank you because, my Father, Lord, men are taking men and women, my Father, they are taking their position back, their families. They are taking back position in their businesses. They are taking back position in the communities. They are taking back their position, Lord, my Father, in their countries that they are in, my Father, Lord. You are vetting every position, O oh God. You remember this country, my Father, Lord, my Jehovah. In this time of pandemic, oh my Father, Lord, the right people that you have called, my Father, and have given the wisdom, my Father, Lord, to take the position, my Father, Lord, to gain this country. You're giving them all, oh my Father, your dealings and the right power and the time, O oh God, to take position and take this country the place we need it to be. I bless you, God, and glorify this morning. You be with us and being glorified. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. May God bless you and may God multiply you in every way and every dimension. In Jesus' name. The Christ has set us free. No longer to be subject to a yoke of slavery.